everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be crocheting this easy beginner friendly rainbow stripes baby blanket. Now this is the perfect size for a newborn baby all the way up to a toddler. Um, it's not huge but not too small. It's the perfect size and works with some fun rainbow colors. So the materials that you're going to need for this rainbow stripes baby blanket are a P or Q 15 millimeter crochet hook. You can change the hook size a little bit if you don't have a 15 millimeter, but if you can, try to use a 15 millimeter crochet hook. And then for the yarn, we're going to be using lots of colors of Bernat blanket yarn. This is the 300 gram ball, and I'm using both Bernat baby blanket and Bernat blanket brights yarn. Now this white is the baby blanket version. It's the 10 and a half ounce 300 gram big ball. They do sell these in the smaller balls as well. And you could do that, but you're going to need a bit more of it in the white at least. Um, but so yeah, for white I'm using Bernat Baby Blanket, and then for most of my other colors I'm using the Bernat Blanket Brights line. Um, I'm doing the purple, the blue, the orange, the pink, and the yellow in brights, and then the baby is the white and then that green color, and I'll go through that just a bit more here. You're not going to use all of these skeins, you're going to have quite a bit left over, so you could save them to make several of these blankets, you could make other projects with the remainder of your skeins, but to get that nice um, rainbow effect you are going to want all of these different colors. So you will have plenty of yarn left over for other projects, or you could even make a much larger blanket um, since you do have such large skeins of these colors. You could also just stick with two colors and just stripe it and it's not rainbow, but you know, it's up to you. So I'm doing purple, yellow, there's my orange, my blue, and my pink. These are all Bernat Blanket Brights, and then this green one is my other baby blanket color. So the baby line has this nice light green color, and it's called Lemon Lime. So I'm going to set all of these aside. I'm going to start with the first color I'd like to use. So we're not going to start with the white. We're actually going to start with the pink is the one that I'm going to choose to use first. In terms of the order you're going to go in, we're going to alternate each of these colors with our white yarn. So you're going to use a lot more white than you will the other colors. One skein of the, each of the other colors is plenty, but I did use um, a whole skein and maybe a little bit extra of the white because we're also going to do our border in white. So make sure that you have enough yarn on hand and go ahead and start with your pink. Now if you're doing the rainbow motif and you're using all of these different colors, I'm going to go kind of in the order of the rainbow. So I'm going to start with my red tone, which is pink, and then my 15 millimeter hook, and then I'll move on to um, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. But we'll see that here in just a few minutes. Going ahead and getting started, grab whatever color you're going to start with first. I'm using my hot pink, and we're going to start with a slip knot. So to make a snip, slip knot, go ahead and wrap the yarn around to make a loop. Place the tail behind the loop, and then reach through. Pull that yarn and create a knot. Now insert your hook in the loop, and then tighten down that knot on your hook. Now we're going to start with our foundation chain. If you want to change the size of this blanket, the width of it, you can change the number of chains that you're doing. But if you want to follow what I'm doing, just go ahead and make a foundation chain. Remember, chain stitch is yarn over and pull through. And you're just going to keep chaining until you have 47 chains. So we need to get to 47. Again, if you want to change the width of your finished blanket, you're going to want to chain either more or less. It's not really going to matter. You don't need like an even number of chains or any kind of multiple here. Just go ahead and chain however many you'd like. I'm doing 47 for a perfect baby blanket size. So go ahead and work up your foundation chain until you have 47 stitches. So here I'm just finishing up those 47. Make sure you're not chaining too tight. A lot of beginner crocheters will uh, make their chain really, really tight, and then that will cause your finished blanket to not lie very flat. It'll start to curl at the edges, and we don't want that. So here we have all of our chains. Now we're gonna work in the second loop from our hook, so the second stitch. So here is the first one here. We can look by identifying the top loops of the stitches. There is our first stitch right here but we're going to work in the second. So identify the first, and then here is the second. So we're gonna insert our hook, 
we're going to pull up a loop, we're going to yarn over, and we're going to pull through both loops on our hook. Make sure your tension is pretty loose and you're nice and relaxed. And we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way down. So single crochet again in the next stitch, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. That is a single crochet. And now we've worked our first two single crochets. You're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across and you should wind up with 46 single crochets in your row. So just watch me do this a few times. If you're brand new to crochet and this is one of your very first projects, don't be intimidated. Stop this video, rewind it a bit, and watch me go through that single crochet really slowly once again and I promise you'll get the hang of it. Make sure you're not twisting your chain as you're working down the length of it here. If you need to go slow, if you need to pause this video and come back to it, that's totally fine. Go at your own pace and make sure to relax and have fun. So once we've single crocheted all the way down the length of the row, it should be looking something like this. So we've single crocheted all the way across including that very last stitch right next to that slip knot. And now we're going to chain up one, so just yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to turn our work. So go ahead and turn your work over and we're going to start with row two in this very first stitch here right next to your chain. And we're going to single crochet. Same thing that you did in the last row. So single crochet in that very first stitch and then single crochet in each stitch across. So this is the exact same stitch, we're just working it uh, now in row two, single crocheting all the way across. Nice and easy. The only stitch we're going to use for the rest of this blanket is single crochet. So if you've gotten this far, you can do the rest of the blanket with absolutely no issues. So we have single crocheted the first few stitches. Make sure that you stitch in that very first stitch. Don't skip that first one so that you have straight edges to your blanket when it's all done. And if you need a little bit more detail on that, I do have a video called Crochet Straight Edges Every Time over on my channel as well. So here we have our first, our second row done. So here is row two all done. We've crocheted all the way across. We should also have 46 stitches in this row. Every row from here on out should have 46 stitches. But now we're going to change color. So go ahead and loosen up that um, loop that's on your hook and we're going to use our white. So loosen up the stitch. We're going to tie the white yarn onto the strand and we're going to slide it all the way down to the right. Insert your hook, tighten down, and then drop that pink yarn and pick up the white yarn, the white yarn that's attached to the ball of yarn, the working yarn. Go ahead and yarn over and pull through with the white, tighten down that pink yarn, and now we've chained up one, we're going to turn and we're ready to go with row three. So row three, you guessed it, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch across. Now don't let these tails confuse you, we're just going to let them be and not pay attention to them and we're going to single crochet in that very first stitch right here next to the chain, this one right here. Make sure not to skip over this one. If you do, you'll wind up with a trapezoid shaped blanket and that is not what we want. So go ahead and single crochet in each stitch across. You can leave your yarn attached to the ball of yarn, that pink yarn that we dropped, you can leave it attached and then carry it up um, later on when we repeat this color, but it's going to get quite difficult with as many colors as we're using to leave them all attached. So I would just go ahead and snip that tail, leaving a tail long enough to weave in later. Um, just snip it and then weave those ends. It's a lot less time consuming than tangling up all of your balls of yarn as we're doing many colors in this rainbow blanket. So we've single crocheted all the way across. Row three is done. Again, 46 single crochets here in the white yarn. We've worked all the way to the end of the row. We're ready to chain up one and turn. And guess what we're going to do for row four? we are going to single crochet in each stitch across. At this point, your single crochet should be looking really good and you should be just rocking and rolling. From this point out, the only thing you have to pay attention to are the color changes. So for me, I'm going to be changing color um, every two rows. So I have two rows of pink, rows one and two, 
Now I'm working on row four, so rows three and four are white. I'm gonna complete this row of single crochet, and then I'm gonna change color again. So every two rows, I have two rows of pink, two rows of white, I'm ready to change color, and I'm going with my orange next. So I'm gonna change color exactly the same way I did the first time, and I'll do that one more time so you can uh, make sure that you have a clear understanding of my color change method. Go ahead and pull up the yarn that's on your hook and tie on your new color. Make sure you leave a tail long enough to weave in later. Tie it on, slide it all the way around to the right side of the stitch. Insert your hook, tighten that stitch down. We're gonna drop the white and pick up our orange yarn. Yarn over and pull through to chain one. Tighten down that white yarn, and we're going to turn our work. Once again, single crochet all the way across, now with that orange yarn. Now remember how I talked about carrying up yarn and whether or not to snip your ends. On that pink end, I'm going to go ahead and snip it, because I won't be using pink again for quite some time. I have to get through all of these other colors first. But that white yarn, I am going to leave attached to the ball of yarn. Don't snip that one yet, because after we work two rows of orange, we're going to be working right with that white one more time. So because we're alternating a color and then white, a color and then white, and we're doing two rows of each, we can carry up that white yarn. So I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. Go ahead and work up your two rows of orange going all the way this way and all the way back the other way. And now that we have two rows of orange done, we can see how it should be looking, and we've worked all the way back to where our white yarn left off. So now that we've done white and a color, we need to do white again. So I'm going to drop this orange yarn, I've finished up this row, and I'm going to pick up the white. So make sure you're picking up the white working yarn, the one that's still attached to the ball of yarn. And all I'm going to do is yarn over and pull through to chain one. And we can see here that there's a little strand of white yarn that's carried up and over the side, but we're going to cover that later on when we do our border, so don't worry about that yet. And now we're just ready to go with our single crochets, and we can work all the way across. So we can see here how this should be looking. Make sure that when you carry up that yarn, there's not too much tension on the strand because then that will kind of gather things on this side and make it pucker, and we don't want that. But later on when we do the border, we'll cover this little strand that's coming up and over our orange stripes. So we're able to do this with every single um, white carry. So we can carry up our white yarn every single time, being that we're alternating two rows of color, two rows of white, two rows of color, and two rows of white. In crochet, you can probably carry your yarn as long as you're always doing even numbers of rows when we're doing color changes, but it can get really complicated with the more colors you use. So that's why for all of my colored yarn, I'm just going to go ahead and snip that end and then weave it in later. It's just a lot easier when we have a lot of colors to deal with. So let's just practice carrying up just the white yarn for this project. So we can see here how this should be looking. We're going to go ahead and work up our two rows of white. And now I have that done. So we can see here how it's looking. Two rows of pink, two rows of white, two rows of orange, and two rows of white. Now we're ready for yellow. Again, same thing, I'm going to join my yarn the same way every single time by loosening up that loop and tying on the new strand. It's a very easy and very secure color change and I really prefer it to a lot of other methods of color changing. It's just my personal preference. If you have another way that you prefer to color change, by all means go ahead and do that. But I definitely want to show all of the beginners and new crocheters how I do this. Um, because color changes really don't have to be hard and scary, but I know that they are when you're brand new to crochet. So I've tied on my yellow yarn, I've put it over to the side, I'm tightening down that stitch, and now I'm going to yarn over and pull through with my yellow yarn to chain one. Again, leave that white yarn attached to the ball, don't snip that tail yet. You can see that my colored yarns, those tails are snipped, but my white yarn I'm going to leave on there. And now with yellow, we're going to single crochet across. Go ahead and work up your two rows of yellow. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before, and we're going to carry up that white yarn. So go ahead and work across and back with yellow. And then we'll carry up that white yarn again and do two rows of that. So you can see here I've worked a little bit ahead. I have pink, orange, yellow, and now I've done some green. 
So you can see here kind of the order of things and now you should just be rocking and rolling and you can just whip this thing out. So go ahead and continue always alternating with two rows of color and two rows of white and just single crochets all the way across. Every single row, remember, should have 46 stitches. And once you work all the way through all of your rows, we're ready to weave in these ends. Now what I've done here is I've carried the white yarn up every single time. So I've worked through all of my color um, sequence twice. So I've done pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then I've repeated that. So I have that sequence twice through obviously with two rows of each color and two rows of white in between. Now I'm going to go in and weave all of these colored ends and I'll show you the way I do that now. Make sure you have a large eye um, tapestry needle for this ultra bulky yarn and I'm just going to weave back and forth at least two or three times and I'm weaving through the centers of the stitches. I'm not weaving around the stitches. That's going to make things a little bit more secure to weave through the stitch itself and it hides the tail a bit better as well. So after I've waved back and forth two or three times, I'm going to go ahead and snip that tail and now I can throw this away. Go ahead and do that same method with all of these colored tails, but we're going to leave our white yarn attached. So here with our white yarn, we're going to use that to do our border, but first we need to weave all these colored tails. So now that I've weaved everything, I'm ready to go with my border. Now I've finished off with my last uh, row of white. So I've done all my colors, I've repeated my color sequence twice through, now I'm ready for my white border. So now that I'm working with the white, I'm just going to work three single crochets in this corner. So I've worked this row across, I'm not turning my work, I'm going to go ahead and work a couple of extra stitches for three in this last corner. And then I'm going to work down the side of the work. So I'm going to work down this raw edge that's into the sides of the rows and the sides of the stitches. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to insert my hook into the side of the stitch. Now for every row of, of single crochets you have, you need to work a single crochet for the border. Now what I mean by that is if you have two rows here of purple, then in the end of your purple strip you need to have two single crochets. Now we have two rows of white, so we need to make sure that there are two single crochets covering that white area, and it should be pretty obvious when you're looking at this in your own two hands um, where to place those stitches. Now you can see here where I've carried this white yarn, and I'm just working right around it. I'm acting like it's not there. I'm working into the end of the row itself, not into that strand of white yarn that's carried up. And that white yarn will just hide under the border as long as you don't pay any attention to it. Just act like it's not there. So now we've gone all the way around. Just continue with that method, working three single crochets in each corner. And now when you get to the end, we're just going to slip stitch to close. If you need to pause and rewind that to see how I slip stitch, please do. Um, and now we can just finish off our yarn. So we need to snip a tail that's long enough to weave in. So snip that and then to finish off we're just going to yarn over and we're going to pull it all the way through and out. So pull that tail through and tighten that knot down and now that end is ready to weave. And we can weave that end and then now this blanket is done. If you need any help with the color changes themselves I will have a link to the written pattern um, in the description box below and that will give you an in-depth breakdown on how many rows of each color, how to follow the right color changes, um, and just a written version of the pattern with a lot more photos and information over there on all the materials you'll need and all of my favorite things about this blanket. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was easy for all the beginners out there. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click subscribe below. It helps me out a lot and it gives you new notifications every time I post a crochet tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.